Welcome to the History Hub, where today we're diving straight into a tale of names and identities. It's a question that has engaged historians, scholars and enthusiasts, including you, in a lively debate. Was it the Eastern Roman Empire or the Byzantium Empire? When discussing the Eastern Roman Empire or the Byzantine Empire, it's imperative to understand the roots of this vast civilization. So where did it all begin? The Roman Empire in its prime was a marvel to behold. From the sun-baked deserts of North Africa to the cold, rugged terrains of Northern Europe, the empire's grasp was vast and its influence undeniable. Latin became the language of governance, roads connected the distant corners of the empire, and the legions marched under the proud eagle standard. However, as the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, and it certainly wasn't easy to manage in its entirety. The vast size of the Roman Empire brought challenges, communication lags, external threats on distant frontiers, and administrative complexities began to strain the cohesive strength of the empire. Recognizing the logistical challenges of governing such an expansive territory from a single center, Emperor Diocletian made a pivotal decision in 285 AD. He divided the Roman Empire into the Eastern and Western Roman Empires. While both halves shared cultural, legal and military practices, this division was a practical solution for administrative and defense purposes. The Eastern Roman Empire, with its rich provinces in Anatolia, Egypt and the Eastern Mediterranean, began to flourish. Trade routes brought wealth, and cities like Antioch and Alexandria were buzzing with activity. But the star of the show was a city named Byzantium, which would later be renamed Constantinople, laying the foundation for the empire's new identity. Before the grandiosity of empires and the debates of historians, there was a city. A city that would become the heartbeat of an empire and a beacon of civilization. That city was Byzantium. The tale of Byzantium began long before the Romans set foot on its shores. Founded by Greek colonists in 657 BC, it was named after their leader, Byzas. Located on the European side of the Bosporus Strait, the city held a strategic significance that was evident even then. It stood as a guardian to the only passage between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, controlling both trade and military movements. The Romans, ever expanding and seeking control of crucial trade routes and strategic locations, turned their gaze towards Byzantium. The city was annexed to the Roman Empire in 196 AD by Emperor Septimius Severus. Enter Emperor Diocletian in 285 AD. The empire had been plagued by decades of economic downturn, external threats and short-lived emperors. Diocletian had an ambitious plan. Recognizing the challenges of governing the colossal empire, he decided on a radical move, split the empire in two. On one side, the Western Roman Empire with its capital in the magnificent city of Rome, continuing the legacy of Romulus, Caesar and Augustus. On the other side, the Eastern Roman Empire, based in the thriving city of Byzantium, soon to be renamed Constantinople. This strategic location bridged the gap between Europe and Asia and was ripe for growth. This division wasn't just about making administration easier, it was about survival. However, while the Western Roman Empire would eventually face decline and fall in 476, the eastern half continued to flourish, outliving its western counterpart by almost a millennium. 
The heart of our confusion lies in the illustrious city of Byzantium, later renamed Constantinople in 330 AD, and much later, Istanbul. As the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, it thrived for centuries, outlasting the Western Roman Empire. The empire's citizens, speaking Greek and practicing Orthodox Christianity, still considered themselves Romans. Yet as the city evolved, its identity merged with various influences, making it distinct from ancient Rome. A pivotal moment arrived in 1054 AD with the schism between the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches, underlining the widening chasm between Eastern and Western cultures. The Ottoman Turks, under Mehmed II, brought the an end to the empire by capturing Constantinople in 1453. Fast forward to the 16th century. Hieronymus Wolff, a German historian, sifted through manuscripts and records aiming to chronicle the Eastern Roman Empire. In doing so, he started using the term Byzantine to differentiate this medieval empire from its ancient Roman predecessor. Wolff wanted to distinguish between the Latin-speaking Romans of antiquity and the medieval Greek-speaking Christians. His works, especially the Corpus Historiae Byzantinae, became foundational for later Byzantine studies. As a result, Byzantine became a term used predominantly by Western scholars, painting a picture of an empire distinct from classical Rome. However, it's crucial to understand that this was an external label. Citizens of the empire had always seen themselves as Romans, Romaioi in Greek. They never adopted the Byzantine identity, it was a posthumous title bestowed upon them by later generations. For some historians, the term Eastern Roman Empire is the more accurate descriptor. They argue that the empire's administrative, legal and military systems were continuations of Roman traditions. Furthermore, the empire's citizens saw themselves as Romans. This perspective respects the continuity and self-identification of the empire's inhabitants. On the flip side, other historians advocate for the Byzantine Empire label, emphasizing the distinctiveness of the empire, especially during its medieval phase. They point to the Greek language, the Orthodox Christian faith, and unique administrative reforms as evidence that the empire had evolved into a distinctly different entity from ancient Rome. we arrive at our conclusion, faced with an inevitable question. Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantine Empire? Which name do we settle upon? The answer, as with many historical debates, isn't black and white. It depends on the perspective one wishes to emphasize. If we want to honor the self-identification of the empire's citizens and the continuity of the Roman state, Eastern Roman Empire stands as a fitting choice. It reflects the empire's deep-rooted connection to the grandeur of Rome and its lasting legacy. Conversely, if we aim to highlight the empire's distinct evolution, cultural shifts, and the blend of Greek, Roman, and Christian influences that made it unique, Byzantine Empire captures this essence beautifully. It underscores the transformation of an empire that carved its own identity in the annals of history. Ultimately, both names offer a glimpse into different facets of the same historical gem. As students and enthusiasts of history, our task is to delve deeper beyond names and labels, to understand the essence and the myriad stories that lie therein. Whichever name you prefer, the empire remains a testament to the fluidity of civilization and the rich tapestry of human history. And with that, we conclude our journey for today. Stay passionate, stay curious, and until next time, keep exploring the vast corridors of our shared past here on the History Hub. And as always, hit subscribe for more epic tales from history.